A data center is a specialized facility designed to store, manage, and process large amounts of information. Inside, you will find rows of servers stacked in racks, all connected by high-speed networking equipment. The entire environment is carefully controlled with dedicated power backup systems and specialized cooling to ensure these machines run smoothly day and night. Companies rely on these data centers to keep their critical applications and services up and running. In this video, we will break down the concept of hosting and how data centers have evolved over time. We will explore the challenges of managing traditional data centers and compare them to cloud providers like AWS, GCP and Azure, which operate on a completely different scale. From training machine learning models to running large-scale AI services, cloud data centers play a critical role in shaping the future of technology. So let's dive in. Let's start with the basics. Hosting. Imagine you're running a website or an app. You need a place to store all the files, data, and code that make it work, right? And that's where hosting comes in. Hosting is essentially renting space on a server a powerful computer that's always connected to the internet. This server stores your data and makes it accessible to users whenever they need it. Back in the day, if you wanted to host something, you would probably buy your own server, set it up in a closet or a small room and manage everything yourself. But that came with a lot of headaches, like maintaining the hardware, dealing with power outages or scaling up when your website got more traffic. And that's where data centers come into the picture. A data center is a massive facility filled with thousands of servers that store and process data for websites, application, and services. So instead of businesses setting up their own infrastructure, they often rent space in a data center or use cloud providers that own these data centers. So what's inside a data center? There are servers like the physical computers that store and process data. We got networking equipments like routers, switches, and fiber optic connections to ensure fast communication between servers and the internet. There is power supply with backup generators and redundant power systems to prevent any downtime. We know servers generate heat, so data centers have industrial cooling to maintain optimal temperatures. It has also got biometric authentication, surveillance, and restricted access to protect any sensitive data. Now, operating a data center isn't just about plugging in servers and letting them run. It comes with its own set of challenges. First, there is the cost. Building and maintaining these facilities require industrial grade power, cooling, and top tier security. And then comes scalability. As data needs to grow, companies must expand their infrastructure, which means major investments in space and hardware. Security and compliance are also critical, since data centers handle sensitive information and must meet strict industry regulations. And let's not forget about reliability. Even a small outage can cause massive disruptions. So backup systems like power generators and redundant network links are a must. Finally, there is the environmental impact. These facilities consume enormous amount of electricity and generate heat, making energy efficient design essential for both sustainability and cost control. Over time, data centers evolved from small localized setups to enormous highly optimized facilities. In the early days in the 1960s and the 70s, computing was dominated by mainframes. Huge room-sized computers that were used by large organizations like governments, banks, and universities. Companies could even build their own to host their websites, emails, and internal systems. But these were expensive to build and maintain, and they required a lot of physical space, cooling systems, and IT staff to keep them running. The 1990s saw the rise of internet which created a massive demand for web hosting and online services. Companies needed a way to host their websites and applications without building their own data centers. It was a step forward, but companies still had to manage their own servers and software. And then came the game changer, cloud computing. Companies like AWS, Google Cloud, and Microsoft Azure flipped the script. So instead of renting physical space, you could now rent virtual space. They built massive global networks of data centers and offered computing power, storage, and other services on demand. This was a huge shift because it allowed businesses to focus on building applications without worrying about the underlying infrastructure. The 2020s have been defined by the rise of generative AI models like ChatGPT, which require massive amounts of computing power and data. 
Data centers are now hyperscale, meaning they are designed to handle millions of servers and exabytes of data. The rise of cloud computing and AI has automated many aspects of data center management, reducing the need for manual intervention. All the cloud providers have their own global network of data centers. They have in fact turned data centers into global utility, like electricity or water. These massive facilities are strategically located around the world to ensure high availability, redundancy, and low latency access to their cloud services, allowing users to rent virtual resources instead of setting up their own infrastructure. Cloud providers basically abstract data center complexity. So instead of buying physical server and setting it up in a private data center, cloud providers allow you to rent computing power, storage, and network resources on demand. This means businesses and developers don't need to worry about hardware maintenance, power supply, or physical security. AWS, GCP, and Azure operate multiple data centers worldwide, known as regions and availability zones. And this allows users to deploy applications closer to their computers, improving performance and reliability. In a traditional data center, companies need to buy and maintain their own hardware, which is costly and difficult to scale. Cloud providers allow businesses to scale instantly by provisioning new servers in seconds, without large upfront investments. Now, in the early days of data centers, CPUs were the workhorses. CPUs are general purpose processors designed to handle a wide variety of tasks like running operating systems, managing databases, and serving web pages. They are great for tasks that require sequential processing, where one task follows another. But here's the thing, CPUs are not optimized for the kind of parallel processing that AI workloads demand. Training a machine learning model, for example, involves performing millions or even billions of calculations simultaneously. CPUs can do this, but they are slow and inefficient compared to GPUs. Enter GPUs, or Graphics Processing Units. Originally designed for rendering graphics in video games, GPUs are built to handle thousands of small tasks at once. And this makes them perfect for the parallel processing required by AI and machine learning. Let's talk about the difference between a traditional Google search and a query to chat GPT. This really highlights how AI workloads are fundamentally different and much more resource intensive. When you type a query to Google, here is what happens. The search engine looks up your query in a massive index of web pages. It ranks the results based on relevance using algorithms like PageRank. And it then serves you the top results in milliseconds. This process is highly optimized and relies on CPUs. While it's computationally intensive, it's mostly about retrieving and ranking pre-existing data. It doesn't require generating new content or performing complex calculations on the fly. Now let's compare that to ChatGPT. When you ask ChatGPT a question, it doesn't just retrieve pre-written answers. Instead, it generates a response word by word based on patterns it learned during training. And this involves running a massive neural network with billions of parameters. Each word generated requires the model to perform millions of calculations. The model also considers context from the conversation, which adds another layer of complexity. And this is why a single chat GPT query can require 10 times more processing power than a simple Google search. And it's not just about retrieving data, it's about generating new content in real time, which is far more computationally demanding. The move from CPUs to GPUs and the rise of AI workloads like chat GPT have some major implications on the data centers. AI workloads are incredibly energy intensive. Training a single large language model like GPT-4 can consume as much energy as hundreds of homes use in a year. Data centers are now consuming more power than ever, and this trend is only going to increase as AI becomes more widespread. And this has led to push for more energy efficient hardware and renewable energy sources. Building and maintaining data centers with GPUs is expensive. GPUs cost significantly more than CPUs, and they require specialized cooling and power systems. Cloud providers like AWS, GCP, and Azure are investing billions in expanding their infrastructure to meet the growing demand of AI workloads. On the flip side, cloud providers have made AI more accessible. So small companies and startups can now access GPU-powered infrastructure on demand without having to build their own data centers. This has democratized AI, enabling innovation across industries. But the energy demands of AI have raised concerns about its environmental impact. Training large models generates significant carbon emissions, 
and the industry is under pressure to find greener solutions. Some companies are exploring ways to reduce the carbon footprint of AI, such as using more efficient algorithms or locating data centers in regions with abundant renewable energy. The shift to GPU-centric data centers is just the beginning. As AI continues to evolve, we are likely to see even more specialized hardware like TPUs or tensor processing units and AI accelerators designed specifically for AI workloads. There is also growing interest in quantum computing, which could revolutionize AI by solving problems that are currently impossible for classical computers. In short, hosting has come a long way, from running servers in closet to leveraging global cloud infrastructure. Traditional data centers were limited by cost, scalability, and maintenance, but cloud providers have turned these challenges into opportunities. By offering scalable, on-demand resources and specialized tools for AI, they have become the backbone of modern technology. And as AI continues to evolve, so will the data centers that power it, shaping the future of innovation in ways we are only beginning to imagine.